Hello everybody, welcome to number 27. I'm Jack and this is a 1981 Renault 5 Turbo. When I heard that I was going to get to drive one of these, let alone the very special series one, I was beyond excited. Today, I'm going to explain why this car turns me into a wide-eyed 10-year-old, what makes it so special over and above a series two, then we're gonna take it for a drive and really hope that it doesn't disappoint. So why do I have such a huge man crush on this car? Now, for many people, it's the racing heritage that does it. Jean Ragnotti was very successful rallying this. The maiden Monte Carlo rally that he did, he won. So that illustrious competition history does help. For me, it all began when I was just 10 years old in 1983. On a cold November night, I went to the cinema to see Never Say Never Again. And the five turbo, featured in one of the most iconic Bond chases of all time. Best of all, the fire itself was driven by baddie and extreme hottie Fatima Blush. I never quite got over that. So today, the pressure is really on for the 5 Turbo to live up to my 007 shaped expectations. So it was based on the Renault 5 Gordini, which in itself came out two months before the venerable Mark I Golf GTI. Although saying that it was based is a bit of a loose term because so much as we will see was changed on this car. It was styled by Marc Duchamp under the tutelage of Gandini at Bertone. And surely this is the most outrageous rear end on any car you've seen. I know that there are supercars of the 80s that are similar, but if you take what it used to be and compare it to what it is now, this really is incredible. Of course, the engine is in the middle, but you'll notice that it's also oddly offset to the left. The gearbox is taken from a Renault 30 TX, which was the V6 flagship of Renault at the time. And it's incredible that they managed to get 160 horsepower from a 1.4 pushrod engine. That's because they ran a quite meaty 12 pounds of boost. There's something more special about the back end though, the suspension is totally different from the normal hatch. It's taken from the A310 Alpine supercar of that time. Now, I would love to get my hands on any Renault 5 Turbo, but the Series 1 really is the daddy. So there are a few reasons for this. First of all, it was built in much lower numbers. Second, there are some physical differences. These ones had lightweight panels on the bodywork, a mixture of aluminium and plastic composite. But for me, one of the clinches is that this, as you will see now, has one of the most brilliant interiors ever. Now, when they built the Turbo 2, Renault decided to be sensible. So the interior on one of those is pretty much the same as a standard Renault 5. But when Bertone came up with this, for some reason, the bean counters at Renault thought it would be a good idea to let him do a bespoke interior. So it has a different dash, different instruments. It has these absolutely amazing seats, which I think, I don't know, they must be amongst the most bonkers and my favorite, some of my favorites of all time. And just look at that color scheme. You have the vivid, incredible laser blue with that red. It's just I, I can't describe how much I love it. But enough of that now. Let's take it out and see if it drives as well as it looks. Now there's a very important part of the interior, again, which is really special on the Series 1 that I totally forgot to mention a few minutes ago, and that is that steering wheel. Look at that offset with a little insert, the hole. I also think that the window wipers on these with the red insert, that they are also specific to this car. Either way, it's a very special thing and Richard has made it feel even more special. Now this is the same guy, by the way, who brought me the Monteverdi and the Lamborghini Silhouette. So he's got such an interesting collection. But you've got there the little Concord matchbox, which is so fitting for that point in time. And he has fitted not only one of these roof, I think it's a Panasonic roof unit that you also get on some of the Lotus Esprits that they look so cool and it is so perfect for a sort of early 80s car like this one. But the, one of the only options you could have on these cars back in the day was that rear speaker 
unit that goes in the back and he managed to find one of those and has had that put in the car as well. So it's got a stereo, it doesn't sound good, but it looks amazing. And the whole car generally is just so original and so perfect. I absolutely love it. Raised right behind the engine so the linkage has to go all the way from here to pass the engine to the back of the car that makes it a little bit difficult but I think I'm slowly getting used to it the one good thing is that engagement is positive but it's long travel and it's quite vague that's a warm day he's driven it recently so let's take it through the gears its power between four and a half and five and a half six so for a turbo you have to rev it I think that probably that's because it's got that competition nature to it and it develops the power high up in terms of sound it's just fairly monotone I wouldn't say it's exciting but the way it builds power quite gradually once it's on the boost is really quite nice and the steering it's one of those which is going to get me all weepy eyed again because obviously it's unassisted but for a mid-engine car there is a little bit of weight to it so the the way that the feedback comes back to you, it's just, I don't know how to describe it, it's heavy. The feedback is heavy, it makes the steering heavy. So unlike some other mid-engine car I've been in where you still get feedback but it's quite a light feel, this weighs up quite nicely which is reassuring, especially on a car with such a short wheelbase which you expect to be a little bit snappy, it's nice that it's well judged. It rides really well, it soaks up all the bumps. The way the chassis is set up, at least at these speeds when you're going normally, it doesn't really particularly scream no compromise. The seats are fairly comfortable, there's enough room. The driving position, it feels a bit odd in the way that your knees are high up, but really it's pretty comfortable and these crazy seats are quite supportive off the boost here we're at three and a half it does absolutely nothing let's go down into four put your foot down and it starts to pick up at about four and a half five now what i'd heard about the Renault 5 turbos is that you know they quite easily chuck you into the hedge because they're so they're so abrupt in the way the power comes in i have to say at this point in time, I don't want to tempt fate, tempt fate even, but I'm just not feeling it. It doesn't feel that bad. Yeah. That was absolutely fine. Seems to be plenty of grip there. Now, a lot of people change the wheels because these are metric, so they use the old Michelin FVX tyres, I can't remember what they're called, but this has retained them. I think in terms of looks, it's an absolute priority. They may not be the best tyres, but these cars have to have these wheels on them. And, you know, it had plenty of grip there, so no particular need, really, I think, to go with a more modern tyre. We're going to take it back, though, now, and we'll give it a little bit more enthusiasm on this run. See what it feels like. Another couple of things, just as we wait for the traffic to peter out, is that You'll notice that the front of the car itself is red. All the plastics are a sort of a lighter colour. I initially imagined that that was because they were discoloured from the sun. But that's how these cars came. It is part of its colour scheme. Right, let's go. impressive I think 950 kilos it weighs 160 horsepower for a 90 
1981, this would have been absolutely ballistic. It's also lovely the way your thumb goes through that hole in the steering wheel. It gives you a bit more purchase on it and it feels good. Wow, what a thing, I love it. It leans a fair bit, it's not a stiff car. We're gonna have to do those curves again because that just is so nice. And obviously when you're driving like this, the slower corners, it's where you feel you can push a car like this a little bit more because there's less risk of something going wrong. Whereas on fast sweepers, well, you want to take too many liberties. It's got some real precision to it, and despite the fact that it looks so wide, obviously it is still quite a small car. It's a very easy to place on the road. The engine's got plenty of power to play with for something like this. It's always there, it's always present. It's not particularly interesting or charismatic, but it does what it needs to do. And these curves are a little bit quicker. Again, the amount of lean is interesting. And now this, it came with dampers originally. I can't remember what they were called, but they were not rebuildable. But Richard managed to get them rebuilt. So this will be driving exactly as the original cars did. Now I'm gonna correct myself very slightly on the engine. Yes, okay, it's maybe not the most sonorous lump in the world, but if you think about it, a four cylinder, 1980s it does sound okay but also i think it's the enthusiasm with which it develops the power that makes it fun rather than the sound i'm still trying to get to grips with the way it feels like it's rolling and i think it might be those old style tires more than the chassis itself that's doing that once it's settled in the corner you get so much feedback through that it gives you a lot of confidence to just keep pushing it. The front end feels absolutely solid, like it's not gonna go anywhere, like there's so much grip in reserve. I think if anything, it will be the back that gives up first. I don't know if we'll get close to that today. There's a little bit of a whistle from the turbo and on the overrun, if you accelerate, then let your foot off a little bit of burbling as it's just reminding you that it's waiting to be woken up again. steering wheel that looks so incongruous in a way and actually every time I look at it, it just looks long it looks like the car should be shooting off to the side it's actually quite nice to hold and to use you either get your thumb through that hole which helps you hold it or the two the three fingers come up and hold it in place the thumb goes over the top so it's actually it's quite nice Initially in the corner, especially if you're not going in committed enough, it will push front, it will push wide a little bit at the front, and then as soon as the power comes in, it tightens it up. It's lovely. It doesn't feel like it's going to kill you, which is what everybody says these are going to do. Now, I'm not saying that couldn't happen. Maybe it could if you keep on, you know, if you keep on provoking it, but certainly at these sort of quickish speeds, it feels benign. and. What I'm going to take away with me is that it's got a perfect mixture of smallness whilst feeling like a bigger, more stable car. So it's small, so you have the advantage of being able to take different lines than you would maybe with a bigger car. But it's not nervous. You know, that steering is so well weighed, it's not overly fast that it feels like it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty calm car in a way. This feels and looks exactly as a rally stage would do. And it does really feel at home here. I think that, that the, the different rear suspension, I think the original five had a torsion beam rear. Um, putting in the suspension from the Alpine really helps obviously to aid with that stability 
it's soaking up the bumps, it's not being pushed offline. And it, I think that's what's helping to make it feel like a bigger, more mature car than you would think. It doesn't skip, it doesn't hop, it just deals with everything. Perhaps there's a little bit of a, a lack of travel ultimately for the bigger stuff, but it's really pretty good. Where that engine shines is something like this really, where we're in third gear, three and a half. Now plant my foot, it's already starting to pick up, four it's picking up more, five, five and a half, six, and it almost feels like it's never going to run out. Brakes are okay, I haven't taxed them today, but at least the level of feel that's coming through is pretty good. So in terms of one, I think this is up there with my top five ever cars. And it's the whole package. The way it drives doesn't disappoint. If you put it together with the way it looks, the way it sounds, the way it goes, this interior, and the driver feedback that it gives, it is really a very, very special thing. Now, if you enjoyed this, do have a look at my video on the Alpines. They are incredible cars. The A310 actually shares its suspension and its wheels with this. And is another sort of French gem, which I think is underappreciated. Thank you all so much for watching. I really look forward to seeing you for the next video.